И спортбетском уникальное место для настоящего геймера. Только здесь возможны ставки на киберспортивные события. Ты знаешь толк в самых популярных играх и готов рисковать? Смотри регулярные трансляции и зарабатывай реальные деньги. И спортбетском живой азарт и холодный расчет. All right, that means we are just about ready, guys. We're just waiting for the server to be up. I actually thought it was going to be up already, so I started playing the ads. But it can't be much longer now. The other game finished, and Berserk lost yet another game this evening, which is obviously a little bit of a tough evening for them. But I do think they, they can take a lot away from this, as we were discussing earlier, because luckily for me, I'm not alone. So, Semler and Vendetta, are you guys still awake? Maybe yes, maybe no. <gasps> Have I been abandoned? Did I unmute the right Skype? That's the first thing. I think I did. They might have both actually just like gone to watch the international because it's been so long. All right, I can take a hint. I'm sure they'll be back any second, guys. Don't worry. Or oh, they're watching the football match. Actually, that could be another thing. Either way, uh, this game should be coming up hopefully very soon, and then we will be ready. It is going to be. Um... Oh, you guys can hear me. Am I doing something wrong? It could be, actually, that I am trolling myself somehow. <laughs> Alright. So apparently, Vendetta is eating ice cream, and I don't know what Semler is doing. Ah, well. I'm still trying to connect. So give us a second, guys, and we will be ready with everything. In the meantime, you should go and follow us on Twitter if you haven't already. Um, I need... Like a hundred more followers on Twitter, and I'll be at fifteen thousand. So um, yeah, that's uh, at Nip Anders. It's at Semler the Riot, and it's at Vendetta Go. So go and follow us on Twitter, and you can see. Mm -hmm. Still not connecting to the server, please. I just want to watch the game. I don't know why this match isn't on CSGO Lounge. I think they weren't able to upload it quick enough, basically. So uh, that's obviously a little bit of a shame. But um, you guys had plenty of chances to bet on other matches. Um, and I'm sure they'll, there's going to be more chances in the future. So Don't bet all your skins away. Let's see. We might have to remake this call. I'm going to see if I can do this. No, no, no. Not at all. So n no Skype call, no working server. Man, what a sad time. Especially because we're already delayed. Um, as you guys may have noticed, this game should have started about half an hour ago, but now it's uh, half past ten instead. So we do apologize. There were some delays, and this game had to wait for another game to finish. So that is what it's all at. <coughs> All right, let's see. I'm going to try and remake the Skype call and uh, see if we can't figure something out. Mm -mm -mm. Semler. Where's Semler on Skype? There he is. Hello? Hello? Oh. Okay, I can hear Vendetta now. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Sweet. So now we now this is real progress. Things are moving in the right direction. <laughs> Two out of three. Does it work now? Are we good? Yeah. I think you may have reset your settings because you sound a little bit lower again than you did earlier. What? Oh, wait, hold on. How about now? Yeah. Better? Much better. Yeah. All right. Okay. So <laughs> now I'm not no longer talking entirely to myself. That's really a good uh, <laughs> you know, real progress. I thought, now I thought things got real quiet all of a sudden. I was yeah, like, well, okay, so... I know Ben. Is like doing something <clears throat> in his kitchen, so that's fine. But Anders, where, where's Anders at? I right, perfect, know. man. Perfect. He's left. Yeah, <laughs> you that, just abandoned us. That other Skype call just died. No idea why, but it did. All right, well, it's it's going away now. There we go. Yeah. Mm hmm. So now, what are we left with? Um, still, still working on getting an actual uh, IP up and running for the server. And once we have that, obviously, then we will be ready to go. So um, yeah, a little bit of patience, guys. But we should be, we should be there any second, basically. 
In the meantime, what have you guys been up to? Have you been following the World Cup? I haven't. Uh, What's happening? I've been furiously multitasking between the World Cup and uh, TI. It's pretty yeah. much what I've been doing. It's more uh, TI right now. Actually, I've got that going. Yeah, I've got like four TI streams and a World Cup stream up right now. Yeah. That's, that's pretty intense, isn't it? Yeah. And it's impossible to really pay attention to everything. So you're watching one game and you're like, okay, I think I know how things are going right here. And then you come back two minutes later and everything has turned on its head. And you don't really know why. Oh, it's already pretty interesting in, in the internationals so far. That Korean team upset everything. Yeah, that yeah. was very cool, wasn't it? It's scary, though, how good they've gotten in within the space of a of six months it's crazy yeah but I've, you know I, apparently they've been playing for a lot longer i mean i think some of them even have been playing dota for like seven six or seven years so oh they, yeah they played dota for quite some time but if not too long ago before demon joined up with uh, team liquid he played as a ringer for mvp in the kdl all that stuff and he was basically like a god in the korean dota league uh, obviously, you know, Demon is a pretty solid player, but yeah, he was dominating everything and he was playing the, the two position for uh, for MVP and basically just securing a win as he as he liked. Like, there was no real uh, challenge hmm. for him. And Sephir, who is basically, I guess, a, a tier two uh, team in terms of, it's obviously good players, but they're not like pro level teams. Uh, traveled over to Korea and they've been doing pretty solidly. Like I think the only team that have actually won more money and with Dota the last year, disregarding TI, is Alliance. Yeah, uh, so because right. it, yeah, because it's like the payout is crazy in Korea and Sephir have taken advantage of that. But now Phoenix are obviously doing extremely well and it's really fun to see. I think that now, was one no, of the biggest surprises of the, so far this tournament. Oh yeah, absolutely, and they they really stomped Virtus Pro as well. So that was yeah, that uh, was that was really, really entertaining, crazy. man. Double rock drops. Oh hell yeah, that warlock. March is renowned for. Uh, what was it? Can't remember. I think it was March, right? Who plays the warlock? Oh dude, I can't remember. Yeah, it's either he or March, but he's like <laughs> the only guy who plays warlock competitively. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. Such a fun hero, though. Yeah, it is. It really is. He's fun every two minutes when you can drop a rock. <laughs> That's why you get refresher orb. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. So you can do more. Double the fun. <laughs> Double the exactly. fun. Um, uh, yeah, for those of you watching wondering why is this game not starting, it is not entirely clear. I mean, we've been given an IP to connect to, but it's not working, and um, we're all just waiting for uh, for something to get going on. So that's why we're talking about Dota and anything else that we can come up with. So sorry about that, but hopefully we'll be back any second. Yeah, this is uh, this is going to be a really interesting match, though. ESG Reason. After watching what ESG just did to Reason, though, or pardon me, to Virtus Pro, I think Reason have got to be uh, sweating a bit here. Oh, well, yeah. did I just connect? I think I did connect. <laughs> and especially because Reason is a completely new team. Uh, one thing actually that I'm really excited about is the fact that I saw Kevin as in the lineup for reason and uh, to a lot of people that might not mean anything at all but for those of you who played Source and uh, paid attention to the competitive scene you'd probably remember that name Kevin was one of the the absolute best offers in Europe uh, in Source and he's kind of similar to how Delpon was in 1.6 really aggressive opera who does crazy things and gets away with it so I'm really excited to see how good he's actually at he actually is at CSGO because I haven't seen him play that much and I'm not really sure if he's actually put, put a lot of time into this but I'm guessing if he's picked up in a team with Nil and all those guys then uh, he should do okay. We are about to find out I suppose. It's going to be a you know, very very tough match isn't it for uh, for Reason playing up against the uh, ESG. Yeah, yeah. it's not going to be easy. Yeah, I think it looks like, especially after what we just saw ESG do uh, to Virtus Pro on train, this is this is definitely going to be a tough fight. But it looks like it's going to be the same map here. It looks like ESG will be playing train again versus Reason. So double the reason why you know they should be uh, worried a little bit here. The dates. Yeah, 
I definitely yeah. think so. And they did manage to beat Berserk, but I think they've been playing a couple of other higher level teams recently, reason, and it hasn't been going all that well for them. But they are a relatively new lineup, so you know we should give them a chance to prove themselves. And on paper, they they do have some pretty good players, so we'll see, we'll see. But on this, I mean, on this particular map, considering yeah, how ESG just played, I, yeah, I'd give it like quite heavily in favor of ESG. And there's no betting for this match because I think CS Go Lounge, they couldn't put it up in time. Um, so a quick update on how CSGO Lounge works uh, at the moment, in case, because people are sometimes very confused about why can you not bet on some matches and whatever it is. Let's say on any given night of Counter-Strike, there's eight matches put on HLTV.org. I'm sure CSGO Lounge would love to put all those eight matches up for betting because that's more traffic and more fun for them. But um, what happens is that the, the amount of butts they have can't really support that many items being put up because everyone has, you know, 100,000 items on CSGO Lounge that they never really, you know, leave. They're just always on the page. So they can only put up about three or four matches at a time and then some matches get left out. Oh my god. Is that you, Samla, having your microphone down at all times? No. I'm hearing it too. I think it's Ven. What? There's definitely doing... somebody's microphone I can hear at all times. Ah. There we go. It went away. Fair enough. Ven, did you just mute yourself? I'm not hearing Ven anymore. I Anders. can't hear Ven. Okay. I can hear you. All right. You kind of freaked me out there for a second, too. <laughs> I'm like, so confused. Did... I'm just like looking at Skype, wondering what's going on. Did it just die again? No, Skype. Skype right. is a notoriously unreliable uh, piece of software, but... Um, Everyone always says, oh, Dad, just use TeamSpeak or whatever, but it's not that easy. Some of those programs also have weird drawbacks. It's just not easy finding decent voice software. Oh, yeah, well, well, well. We do what we do with what we have. Yeah. yeah. So, Hello. Oh. Yo, welcome back. Uh, let's see how long this lasts. Scott I'm sure to man. just go on vacation. like there was like a vacuum cleaner or something going on behind you. Uh, like is it gone now? Or, or yeah, no, no, it's, yeah, no, it's fine. Just it, fine. It might be. Uh, yeah, it's so warm and humid in Norway right now, so I got the window open. So I guess the ah, occasional, okay. occasional truck could roll by. I do have the window open as well. It's getting pretty hot in Denmark as well. But look, guys, um, yeah, we are not quite ready yet, but at least we have ten people on the server. So. Let's do an official sort of welcome here. We've got ESG versus Reason Gaming, and this is the SLTV Star Series Season 10. You're watching it on NIP TV. I'm Anders, with me is Vendetta and Semler as usual, and it's going to be a best of one game on train. So welcome to the show. ESG, they just beat uh, Virtus Pro on this very map, and Reason come off a victory against Berserk on Inferno. So some, some different caliber teams in here. I imagine it's going to be ESG taking this map. Yeah, I don't think I, anyone's going to fight you on that. No, I think we can all agree that uh, ESG are going to be the clear favorites here. Especially after just beating VP on this very map here, having a great performance, just landing shots left and right. We have to see if, I mean, the thing I th that we have to look for here is whether Delpan and Michael Lele are going to be able to have a repeat performance. Uh, it really feels like those guys are the ones making it happen for the Swedes. Yeah, you, yeah, that's very true because that was a big part of as to why they managed to beat VP in the first place so if they're not going to be on their game maybe they relax a tiny bit too much because they're not playing versus a team like uh virtus pro that could, could happen be. and i'm really excited to see that it's train actually because of kevin is playing again because he used to be a super good opera in uh, css so hopefully he's managed to uh, to get a get a grip on the hop and csgo as well the go mechanics. Well, we are about to find out. It's going to be interesting to see if Kevin can step up to his uh, his reputation that he has from uh, from the source version of the game, or if it's going to be different. I mean, some people have translated really well, and actually, it seems like to me like a lot of the source players have translated really well into this game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, there are a fair uh, fair amount of similarities between the games. So, uh, I mean, it runs on the same engine, but yeah, I think. Kevin has something like 300, no, uh, three, four hundred hours on, on CS:GO. Oh. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not expecting the world, but it would be fun to see how it goes. <clears throat> it is going to be uh, Reason starting on the CT side, which is more favored, and then ESG starting on the terrorist side of train. 
So now we are finally ready, and let's see how it's all gonna unfold. I'm looking to, uh, to ESG here for the pistol round to see if they're gonna do some sort of crazy execute. We saw Virtus Pro with a really cool plan where they had two Molotovs and they prevented the diffuse, you know, just firebombing the B-bomb side, basically. That was cool. This time it seems a little bit more standard coming out from ESG. They have some smokes and some grenades, but it's nothing, it's nothing super in elaborate here. Pretty much just the standard smokes that we're seeing. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty easy. This is similar to what we saw about them doing versus VP, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken completely. Yeah. Oh, one of those smokes failed, actually. So that's a little bit interesting. They, uh, they only have the one smoke out here. The other one, I think, landed somewhere in the T base. And Exa is going to go down now. The game is definitely live. Tenski looking for a headshot on somebody in... He's having a little bit of duel with Emilio and actually coming up rather short. He's down on 12 HP. He's going to go down as well. It's Kevin and Nil left. Nilla left, and uh, it's going to be Nilla all the way at the back line here, trying to hold off the push at Alley. He's looking for the shot, but they line up practically for Delpan. Double headshot for him. One of them, well, he shoots through one guy to get the headshot on the other. That's that's how good Delpan is. And yeah, that's I, actually, that's one of the things we, again, one of the things with the updates. Uh, because of the bullet penetration changes, you can now shoot through a lot of stuff. I think you can line up five people and kill them with a Mag with 7? Shot? Yeah, Mag 7. No, with a Mag 7. Yeah. Orb, Orb only goes through three people, but Mag 7 somehow has more penetration than an AWP, and nobody really knows why. Shotgun. Yeah. All day. Every day. <laughs> All again. Yeah. Yeah, but I think almost by definition, because of, like, pellets being made out of lead, basically, you know, the, they, don't, they don't penetrate all that much. That's a yeah. good point, but then is it aren't, isn't the Mag 7 shooting a solid slug? I thought so. Well, uh, I, I, th I think we're doing it wrong if we're trying to bring logic into this place. <laughs> to this place, this game. Oh, uh, that's a great headshot from Tenski. He does go down, and another one from Exa. So the deal being brought to life here by some of the Danish players, and Exa wants at least one more if he can get it, but he's going to get overwhelmed immediately or taking the shot at the end. But, I mean, what do you guys think... The Deagle did get buffed, and the first time I tried it out in matchmaking, I thought, oh, this is a big buff. It felt like it was much more accurate, but I haven't seen it really translate into competitive play yet. I think it's too good right now. That I think it's just a matter of time before people start picking it up. But I think also what might deter people from using it is the fact that the CSET didn't get nerfed at all. Yeah. So the CZ is still, yeah, yeah, it still rules supreme, and uh, the Deagle is a pretty legit backup. But it also has a bit of a different usage area. It's more yeah. like the long range snipes, I guess, than uh, than anything else. While the CZ is more more balls to the walls and just running at people and hoping for the best, like we just saw. Yeah. Although I think that was MSL with the USP, but. He did. He did go for it. He's gonna even <laughs> outsmart Delpan in the end and get a headshot on him. I could have got the kill on Michaelello too, but now they're gonna swap over to the A bomb sign, and I don't think there's anything Reason can do here. Getting some kills in would be nice at this point, just to do some damage. Well, they have the quick rotation over. They're in position right now, but then Emilio puts one through the wall, through the cinder block, and catches his MSL. So there's one kill. Down to two members here for Reason Gaming. They're looking to try and split this side up, but the bomb has been planted. And Exer, not sure if he made noise. Yes, he did. They know. Roke finds him in the end. It's all down. Well, to Kev. Yeah, not much of a chance. The question is, is yeah, I think he can afford an AWP. It seems like he's saving specifically for that purpose. So that's kind of cool. That's really cool. I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do with it. In any case, three rounds for ESG. Pretty much as expected after them after they picked up the pistol round. And uh, Kevin does opt to pick up an op, so I guess it's time. it's time to see what he is able to do. He may not have a lot of hours, but he has the skins. Look at this. Yeah. New Steel Baronet already and an Asim of AWP. Come on. But I do appreciate that. Skins are important, you know. Gotta gotta make sure you have the right loadout for when you play. Damn straight. This is true. The better the skins, the better the player, obviously. But Kevin getting a little bit sad out here, because look at all the smokes they've just, you know, <laughs> put down to... And he's actually just going to run away. He's so angry, he's just not even going to try to ult from that position anymore. Just running back all the way into the B bomb side. There were a lot of smokes raining down out there, and they still have one more left ESG. And they're going to be pushing up Ivy right through here. Grenades back and forth, and that could have been a monstrous grenade from Exa, but I think it went a little bit too far and only did a little bit of damage to uh, Mikey Lele. Now they're pushing through. He sees the first two people and is calling it out quickly. Nili 
is there for the uh, crossfire, basically, and Mike Lilly is going to be able to take him down and extra drops as well. So patient play here from ESG. No, they're really making it work. Good flashes to lead the way, but there's MSL striking. He's still alive in CT, and that's Tenski now coming in with a good kill of his own. But this is now a three-on-two situation. Michael Lele and Rogue, the last two alive here for ESG in the Swedes. The bomb is dropped kind of out in the open. They need to try and make a run for it at this point. They need to pick up that bomb. They're running out of time. Yeah, but Tenski is covering it nicely. Rogue has the one kill, and they peak a little bit too early. So now Kevin, he just missed a couple of shots as we saw, but now he's going to have to really step it up here. One-on-two. They have picked up the bomb. He misses one more shot. 20 seconds left. They are going to go for the plant, and as they try and run away, Rogue gets taken down. Michael Lele versus Kevin. I'm still going to be watching him. Kevin with the AWP. It's not necessarily the best weapon to have in this sort of situation, but he does spot Michael Lele's feet under the train and gets the shot. Michael Lele caught out in the open. Not going to happen. And with 10 seconds, no kit on Kevin, he still has the time for the defuse. So reason they win that all-important fourth round. Oh, that, ti that tiny detail, as you pointed out there, looking under the train, that definitely yeah. gave him a huge uh, advantage. So that's some intelligent play, but it's still a pretty costly round for Reason. There's a bomb plant for ESG, so they have enough money to buy, and Reason only survived with one member. Uh, it's the worst case scenario they could get out of Earth. It's the worst case for even winning the round. But it couldn't have gone any worse. No without losing the round. <laughs> and now it doesn't start off that much better this round. Delpan already picking off the kill, and MSL waiting down here trying to shoot through the smoke and does a little bit of damage, but probably not quite enough to stop them from running down the ramp here. Delpan picks off one more over at the A bomb site. Exa goes down, and now MSL is very much alone in this B bomb site, and he only has a FAMAS as well. Not even going to be any issue. ESG just basically rolling over this bomb site, and Nilir is going to be left with the AWP trying to pick up some kills. A nice shot there, at least. So man he manages to get one, he gets a second one as well. Man. But with 5 HP left, he doesn't really have many options here. He's got to try and sneak his way around, it looks like. Sneak his way out, just try and stay alive, hold on to this gun so he can hand it over to Kevin in the next round, because they are going to be wrecked. They have no money left reason gaming after this one. So he needs to live at all costs. And there you go. They, now they know that he's in CT, so they could be closing in on him. The thing is that right now the Swedes don't have that much money on their own, so it looks like they don't want to risk running more people at him. Yeah, that's a smart thing. I, I think I would have been a bigger fan of them simply just locking him down like they potentially could have. Instead of Emilio going mm -hmm. down towards CT spawn, they could have just boxed him boxed in him. And as a group gone and kind of squeezed him in yeah, completely true. and I then got, gone for the kill. But in any case, they, they come out of it with two guns alive and... Uh, They'll allow Nilla to, to hold on to that off. Still should be a fairly easy round for ESG. Yeah, and uh -huh. it's Delpan again making stuff happen here. Opening up with a kill. He's going to actually challenge once more. I think he spot the Nilla all the way at the back with the AWP. Not quite yet, so that could be a little bit dangerous. He's going to get shot from one angle. And as he falls down, Nilla misses the shot. Is eventually going to pick it up. But that basically cost extra his life. And now Nilla, I'm not sure why he's running to where the terrorists are, because he should be trying to save this for one more round. He seems to be just trying to take some shots through. Michael Lele put some shots into CT. Not going to get anything of it, though. Nilla's already on his way out, but I think that the, he has been spotted. Emilio has now tracked him down. Nilla giving away his position. Good nade onto Nilla. Not going to do any damage, though. Too far to the right. But a bullet does the job just fine. Yeah, yeah no. I don't, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Probably should have handed over that off uh, to Kevin. Uh, it looked like he was not really comfortable with it, at least from watching him sh trying to shoot Delpan there and, and pop. But in any case, one to five in favor of ESG, and ESG are in a really good spot right now. They can still buy even if they lose this upcoming round, and it's the complete opposite if you're reason gaming. Yeah, things are looking very bad. They are echoing this round. There's a Deagle on Exa, and he's actually the only one in this bomb site. They're already sneaking up. He's going to spot the first guy. Cannot get the kill on Rogue. And now as they try and come up from behind, they might be able to catch Delpan, but he turns around the right time, takes the one instant headshot, and then he's taken down by Nilla, but still a pretty fine job after all from the Swedish author. Nilla gets one more kill on Kritten. That won't make them win the round, but at least, at least it's something going their way. He did manage to get back into pop, though, so he's yeah, just he sticking around. Yeah, I mean, I think he should be able to save this weapon, actually, if he doesn't get over overconfident. I guess it comes down to Tenski just drawing attention, isn't it? And 
yeah. he's doing a good job of it as well, Tedski, really wrapping around, trying to catch somebody off guard here in Connector. May get lucky and catch Emilio out. CZ75, up close, Emilio's too quick. But Nilla does survive with the op, so at least that is something going in uh, in recent Kimi's favor, I guess. It but they, need, they really need to pick up rounds at this point. Uh, the ESG are already at six rounds. We saw how good they were uh, on the CT side versus Virtus Pro, so... Yeah, uh, you're absolutely yeah, right. It's, it's, things it have to happen for a reason right now. Uh, things are looking tricky. I mean, ESG did start out the Virtus Pro game when they were on the terror side with winning six rounds in a row, basically. And they've done very much the same thing here. It's looking looking like they are just a, a pretty strong team on the terror side to train somehow. But what can the Danes do? I mean, they haven't had that many rifle rounds to even play around with. They've been ecoing a lot or how just, you know, playing pistol rounds. I think that I think you just hit it right there, mate, is the fact that they just haven't had that much money. That fourth round not going their way really put them far back. And now Delpan walks forward and picks off Nilla. So this is just getting hairier and hairier here. Delpan, another one, finds Xer under Crows. Yeah, finally they take him down, but he's already opened up this A-bomb site so much that I'm not sure they can hold it, though. A nice shot from MSL is going to take down Emilio. And it is back into a three-on-three, -three, no bomb plant yet. And can they do it? Kevin misses a very easy shot then. I think these are just the nerves playing in at this point because he should have definitely hit that. He's looking for one more kill. He does get the shot through the top of the box then or the top of the barrel. And now Mikey Lele is alone. One on two. The bomb is down and he's just going for the challenge. He's going to fight MSL. Comes out on top. Gets the kill. Now Kevin running in the smoke. And this is not going to work out. Oh, nice, wow. nice, nice one on two for Mikey Lele. Fantastic play by Mikey Lele. Not again. I think that was Michael Lele. He was like, nope, not going to fail this again. It's one on one. He could have gone for smoke. a get right, try to knife him. Try to hack him? Yeah, he could have. <laughs> but that's seven rounds now. That's seven rounds now. T side of trade. One round for Reason Gaming. And Reason, they just continue to be kind of all over the place with their money. I mean, they have an off for Kevs, but past that point, it's, it's very few nades to work with here. Yeah, and uh, I'm still holding inner all by himself. I I think the biggest issue for a reason gaming right now is that they're so far spread out and they it doesn't seem like they have their rotations quite down. Mm. So USD are able to get a lot of ground on each bomb site before Reason managed to rotate enough people over to really fight them back. And the Swedes also have a pretty good way of using the smokes. I mean, Kevin might have an AWP, but because of all this smoking going on, he can't really find a way to use it. Even trying to retake this bomb site, finally he's going to go up and actually take the kill on Delpan, and they will retake this bomb site. That was not what I thought was going to happen. All uh, MSL. Yeah, MSL getting behind everyone there, and I think he timed that perfectly because that flash. I'm not really sure who from reason threw that flash, but as the second he popped around that corner from the one train. That was three flashed ESG members. So he was just shooting fish in the barrel at that point and uh, pretty much closed the round for Reason Gaming. So they just need to do this consecutively. Excellent stuff. So very cool. That was about time as well. Now the big problem is they need to keep doing this for a very long time in this first half. Winning and winning and winning a little bit more because otherwise they'll be out of money completely and ESG are going to steamroll them. They already are basically steamrolling them, but they need to, to put an end to it somehow. Nilla pushed up really close. I like this. If he can take down Emilio, but Emilio knows he's going to grenade him and then spray him down. That was some heads up play. Kevin with the instant grenade back though, so it's not all bad. Yeah, it's a good call here by the Danes, you know, moving four guys over to the A-side very early for the defense. Kev's back line manages to find a good shot with the AWP. MSL from Connector sprays down Rogue. He's going for another one. Is going to find it. Michael Lele taken out now. And it's just with, with that great headshot to bring it back to a one-on-one. -on -one. But this should be MSL. All MSL right here. It should be, but that AK is dangerous. MSL is going to throw out one grenade. Okay, then he wants to go and get the bomb down. Because if he can put the bomb down, he's going to force MSL to move a whole lot more. Right now, MSL can just stand around and wait, but as soon as that bomb's down, game is going to change. I was surprised MSL was giving him this much space as well. Mm -hmm. Is he expecting him to just come and push at him? Yeah, the bomb has been planted, no fake this time around, and now it's up to MSL to, to get lucky, and he will run right into Hoytan. Good spray down. Yeah, I was going to pick up the off for Kevin as well. That yeah, was a little smart. bit scary, because actually MSL was aiming the other way, just as uh, just yeah. as he was peeking. So that was that could have been an awful for MSL, but nice job holding on to it, because they had such a good start to that round. It seemed like they should be able to finish it as well. And did they just pause, or...? No, okay, there we go. 
What was that? The, fu the fuse timer was stood up five for quite some time there. It's a little scary. All right. No more pauses, right. please. Yeah. <laughs> no more pauses. But yeah, but... two rounds in a row for a reason. So that's definitely the way they they need to go about it. It's definitely a step in the right direction. Let's see where their money is at. The, uh, it's they're pretty shattered. Champions. Both yeah. teams, though. Both teams. Yeah. Really yeah. low on money. This is one of those rounds where if you manage to pick it up, the other team has to go, most likely, barring a plank. Oh, that is a very good grenade from MSL. Nicely done. Kevin all the way in the back here is going to smoke off. He's almost dead. He's down to 14. And down below, MSL goes down, trying to spray down three people who came in through the uh, sidewalk there. And now it's definitely going to be a bomb plant. Can they retake it again, Reason? That's the big question. Hurton. Oh, that grenade did not kill him. Down to 3 HP. That was so close. Yeah, but they're, it's a very quick rotation over from Reason Gaming. All four members are here now looking for shots. And they're, snar they're trying to sneak their way forward now again. Tezki getting up close. Good shot from Delpan on upper though. Finds Kevs and that's the off down now for the Danes. But Exer jumps down and manages to find Rogue. Brings it back to a three on four. They do have a lot of health to Danish players still, but it doesn't matter. Nila goes down. Emilio with a great double kill. And Tenski does get almost a double spray down. Probably could have killed Michaelele, but even if he had... It would not have won them the round. There was so little time left. So that's it. 3-8. And now back to square one for Reason Gaming. They just do not have the money once again. I mean, how many rounds have they actually bought in this game? Out of the out of the first <laughs> 11 rounds we've had, they've had, what, like three or four buy rounds? I think four yeah. at best. Yeah. So that's, that's really not a comfortable position for a CT team, of course. Oh, absolutely not. And uh, it seems like the, the minor pause was due to... See us crashing for, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. First Luckily, it didn't interfere. It didn't really do anything. Yes, because he was alive during that retake where he timed out. Yeah. But luckily, it didn't have any effect on the the final result. Yeah, and they're back and ready again. So thank you for the to the players for sorting out that stuff so so soon. It's nice when they are. And they're on point. That's going to bring us into the 12th round. And if you're just joining us, then welcome to the stream. This is the last game of the evening here at the SLTV Star Series Season 10 on an IPTV. Reason Gaming versus ESG. And right now, ESG are looking pretty strong on this map. They just beat Virtus Pro, and now it's Reason's turn to see if they can fight the Swedish uh, players here. Very aggressive play from Reason this time as well. Just pushing four guys out. They do wrap back around through, uh, through Alley which is where they pushed initially. Here's the wraparound timing. Kevs looks for it, but Michael Ellis sees it coming, shuts him down, and the plant will happen for ESG. Yeah, so just very heads up play from ESG, not getting caught up at all by, by the aggressiveness or, or the flank as well. And they are just gonna clean it up. Emilio with a quick triple here at the end, making it 9-3. And I guess the Danes pretty much have to force up, even though it's not gonna be with an AWP, but they're running out of rounds. Yeah, at this point they're in this awkward situation where they have to buy up at any hotel, even remote chance at a full buy, they have to go for it. Because they just need rounds, really, to to have some sort of a cushion going into the T-side. And they, at this point they probably need to win the T-pistol as well. Yes, they definitely do, but right now it's just not looking good. It's really hard to find something to be truly positive about because they are being ripped apart here by... The, uh, by the terrorist team. MSL and X are coming in with some good return kills. Actually, a lot better than I thought it would end up here. MSL peaking once again, does take down one more, and there's the triple. Very nicely done. Could have been a quad kill. He did have the reactions to turn around for that one. Mike Hillele is going to be alone, and he's going to go down. So very nicely done from MSL, in fact. And they're really well. picking up to pick it up. Yeah, and they actually didn't suffer that big of a loss. Uh, they only lost two members. MSL, who killed a bunch of people, so he's all good in the money situation, and uh, they're going to have money to drop a proper weapon for Kevin. So this is definitely was, something they can build upon. Oh, I mean, that was great that MSL was able to get on upper like that so quickly. Yeah. Because you could tell that, that like him being alive was like having a guy alive on Inferno a pit without a smoke to block him off, right? Like, he's just going to be a nightmare. He's going to stop you from doing anything. So that was just a great position for MSL to be holding. It really turned the, turned the round reasons way. And again, MSL alive on the bomb train, does a lot of damage to Michael Lele, drops him down to 12, but no kill. No oh, kill, come on MSL. Pushing in, great double from Kevin, and he's gonna go down, but he did a lot of damage to a third player, and MSL is there to pick up the kills, so very good job here. Now it's finally starting to look like it should look on the CT side of uh, train, but you can't help but feel it's probably a little bit too late at this point, isn't it? It feels like we're watching Berserk. 
Again, yeah. Getting off to that slow start and uh, trying to reel your way back in as the match checks along. But who knows? If they pick up the T pistol, I say they. I'd say they have a fighting chance. But they definitely need the T pistol, regardless of how the first step ends. Yeah, at this point, that's what we're looking at. But <laughs> Delpan is doing work again, takes down one. Tenski tries to get the spray down, but there's just no stopping Delpan, it seems. Neil is going to take one in return, but it's still a 2-1-2. Two -two. MSL and Nilla is still alive. They've got the bomb, though, ESG, and they, they're actually backing it off towards Pop Dog. It seems like they've got an idea. They're trying to just find. They're just trying to force the hand of Reason at this point, like get them into an awkward position and turn this into a two-on-one. But reason they aren't falling for it. They're really just standing their ground. MSL in a good position by connector to look at B, and there's still a man alive, Nilla on A. Yeah, the problem is for Nilla that he's sort of blocked off here. He's gonna have to take the peak eventually against Delpan, and Delpan has such a good position. He's gonna walk all the way over and actually gets taken down. So Delpan overextending. I think if he had stayed on the right side of that train, he would have been just fine. Now Hutton are gonna be alone, and MSL ganging up against him. He's trying to guess when he's gonna peak, but it's not gonna work. So it will be six nine for the first half, and a pretty good retake here from Reason. Yeah, and I'm not really sure if that would have been a kill a week ago, <laughs> the the shot Nilla had onto... Onto Delpan? Oh, yeah, yeah, you could be right. Did not he go really through sure. a train or did he go through a gap? I thought he went through a gap there. Oh, he went through a train. Or it is a gap, but it also an invisible wall there, so... Aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Because invisible walls are a thing on train, which is that pretty fun when you're trying to peek everywhere with a knob. Makes perfect sense. Perfect sense, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, ends up 9-6 in favor of BHG, so they are obviously happy about how that first half turned out. Uh, Reason have to be, I guess, pleased with how they ended the first half, but that's pretty much all they can take from it. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. So, you know, for the second half pistol, if you are Reason, what kind of, what kind of push do you go for? Is it just all standard, or are you going to try something really crazy? Uh... I'm not really sure how much they've practiced. If they haven't practiced that much, I wouldn't be surprised if they just do a bum rush towards inner or out into yard. That I think the the less they have practiced, the less intricate strategies we're gonna see. And uh, it looks like they've actually picked up a couple of smokes and nades here, so we might actually see something uh, cool towards the inner bomb site. Oh, that is usually a big indication, You're right? Just those grenades do say a lot about what a team wants to do, but they are having a lot of speed. Yeah, the bum rush towards the B bomb side, that's what it seems like right now. Grenade falls a little bit short. Rogue, he's going to spot the first couple of people. Now they know that grenade will hit right on MSL, but it does not take him down quite. Mikey Lilly, there's the shot. MSL is gone, and no bomb plant happening yet. Nilla finally going to be able to take it down, but now the whole of the ESG team is actually already here. Another one for one trade until Huiten steps in and packs up a, another kill. Mike Lele trying to get lucky on upper. Not going to happen though. And it's going to come down to Tenski. He is going for the flank. It's now a one on three. Nilla alive behind the bomb trade, but this can't be for long. Emilio no. actually going to give him a, hell, a hand though. It's very near. Yeah, it kills Mike Lele, which doesn't really matter that much in a pistol round. They will get the defuse in. Huiten has plenty of time, even though he's on. 1 HP, be a little bit worried. I'd pretty get the other guy to defuse just so that this guy doesn't bleed to death while <laughs> while he's, you know, handling that bomb. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that push was... it. I kind of like the idea of rushing, but the problem is, I think because MSL died with the bomb, it took them an extra, what, four seconds to put the bomb down? And that's a lot of time. That's plenty of time for ESG to get pretty much the whole team there. So, I don't know, they never really had a chance to get into really good post plant positions because they were just busy fighting from the get-go. Yeah, I think also a bit of an issue was the fact that the smokes and nades that they picked up, they didn't have the time to use them all. Because, I mean, this is obviously because of what you said, MSL wasn't able to put down, or put down the bomb instantly. Yeah. So they had to fumble around, try to get the bomb down, instead of setting up for a good after plant position so the smokes were kind of here and there not really making a lot of sense and they weren't they didn't have the time to throw out all the flashes to hold esg back uh so unfortunate and that's kind of how things snowball when you uh when things don't go according to plan uh, well at least they got the bomb on the first round so they are able to pick up the rifles here in the third round already that's generally how it goes no awp and there is what no there's no one on delpan actually sorry about that so, yeah, no ops on the map so far. None, none. That's the thing, though, because money isn't... I mean, these have been fairly close. The money is not, like, getting out of hand quite yet here. 
But the reason at least they have enough to get a couple flashes, some smokes as well, so they can try for a play here. They are going to sneak a man out on upper, that's MSL, getting a lot of information for his team. Two members there actually for a reason, but Michaelele steps in from connector, gets one. Great headshot from Nilla, shuts him down though. Yeah, that was a pretty great headshot. We saw that from Michael Lillard's point of view, and it looked like he just peeked up really quickly. And Nilla must have guessed the timing exactly right. Now, hmm. I would love it if Rogue would try and play, like, a little bit more aggressively over at this bomb site. Because the way he's holding here, I mean, this is what we saw against Virtus Pro. He just what he did not have a lot of success doing it. So, I'm hoping eventually he's going to switch it up. Yeah, he's very susceptible to pretty much anything with the way he's playing right now. If he had gone on to higher, maybe try to actively peek. Something like that. Yeah. That could have done something for him. But it seems like they're trying to fake out the inner bomb site, but yes, you're not falling for it. You're right, then. They this out. Nilla, I mean, Nilla steps in, manages to get one. Extra's in a great position to flank with then and takes him out. But then Emilio from the back line rotates over and manages to slow things down here. Reason Gaming have. They've got 10 seconds left and they still haven't put this bomb down. They need to get this plant right away. Eight seconds, seven seconds. It's ticking down. Roke steps in and picks off Tensky. And now Exer will finally get the plant. But he's in a 1v2 with 24 HP. Yeah, doesn't work out at all. Um, ah, yeah, so, you know, faking out the V-bomb site, kind of a cool idea, but you are right in that ESG didn't buy it, and by the time the Danish team actually tried to put the bomb down here, as we saw, just not enough health or time to really do anything. 12-6 is now the score, ESG doubling the round score of, uh, of Reason Gaming, and the Danish team also just plain running out of money. Uh, and uh, we see them forcing up because they did get the bomb plant eventually, so they're at the point where they're just going to buy up every single opportunity. They just want rounds as quickly as possible. And, th and it makes sense, I guess, as well, because it's not like they have that much room to work with because ESG are closing in on match point. Yeah, they aren't. They've also pulled an AWP and an auto sniper and Delpan up close here. Emilio is going to help him out, take down Exa and drops Tenski right afterwards. So things are looking very bad here for the terrorist side, but they keep pushing. Mike Hillel with the auto sniper is going to take down MSL, and now it's on Nilla and Kev's or Kevin here. Yeah, those with, tw with 12 HP on Michael Lele, 4 HP on with that. So close reason. They almost get those kills. And now Michael Lele, he's got a pretty decent spot to cover lower. It is going to be upper, however. Roke with the smoke, not going to slow them down. Seems like they're going to go rushing right through. And oh! Rage. Oh, Nilla pulled the pipe! Pyth would be so proud, and he was in the chat earlier. So uh, a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a sacrifice to the to the train ladder god here. It's yeah. Been too long. I think that god was hungry. We hadn't seen Pyth. Gotta be careful. Kill himself with the Negev on ladder in a while. <laughs> oh yeah, they bought Negevs too. You're right. There was some silly stuff that happened in that game. Um, the casual Negev missed by into suicide and dump <laughs> the ladder. <laughs> It's a common strategy nowadays. Ah, uh, look, Pyth is still in the chat, and he has that ladder emote. I love it. Now, <laughs> it's going to be into the 20th round, and it's kind of hard for us, I think, to, to really make this very exciting, because ESG have such a huge lead. Reason Gaming are ecoing, although it's obviously a great opening with MSL with a headshot. And actually, they do have three deagles on this terrorist team, but even if they win rounds now, it's it feels like it's much too late. Yeah, it's starting to... They're starting to run out of time. I do like the fact that they... Pick up a lot of the Eagle Zone. That's very Danish of them. It is very Danish, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, long range hand cannon. If they can get uh, if they can get a good headshot in there, but it looks like they want to rotate around. Emilio, not sure if he knows it, but he's in the perfect spot right now. But though they turn tail, they run, they walk right into Mike and Lele. He's got the auto sniper and he's just cutting them all down left and right. It's all down to Nilla and he gets caught through the wall. So he has just 14 rounds and well, Reason do you have the money to actually buy up and get some ops now. I'm not really too hopeful. They've been cut down pretty easily by ESG so far on the in the second half. Yeah, and the, the problem is as well, even if they do win around at this point, now ESG actually have the money to, to buy even if they lose. So your Reason Gaming have to not just win a, you know, a single round and then they get some breathing room. They have to keep winning in multiple rounds and it's not starting off well. Kevin is down, MSL is down, the Auto Sniper and the AWP doing a lot of work here for the ESG team. Though finally, they do take down Delpan and maybe that's an opening. That could be all they need. They have the double op set up on Reason Gaming after all. You know, what's better than one op, Anders? Definitely two and definitely three. Oh. Kind of just keeps going actually. Yeah, you pull after that you pull a Hellraisers and hell just everybody buys an op. Totally viable strategy on T side. Yeah. 
Well, if we're on dust two these days, it might be. What was that on season? Where we where we watched them do that, or was it Navi? It was Navi or Hellraisers. I think it was Hellraisers, but they did that. They all bought a, they all bought AWPs. It was pretty funny. Oh, and my they made it work. He got caught jumping, but he just keeps running and shooting. Three kills on the round for the auto sniper, and that's a match and map point for ESG. 15 6 is what we're looking at, and Reason Gaming really have no choice but to buy whatever they can, and it's it's a pretty reasonable buy this one. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Uh, I guess, yeah, Kevin has to go for the, the Galil. Could have bought a smoke as well, but no, actually, he couldn't. That's my bad. But yeah, uh, seems like they're just going to go quickly out into yard. This is now or never for uh, the Danish team. Yes, it is a good opening. Nila with the headshot, but then Mikey Lilla with the auto sniper takes down one. Keeps trying through the smoke, but on the bomb train. Fitton is right here. He almost takes down Kevin. Goes for some more pistol shots. The bomb is down. So maybe they can actually seal this reason and get themselves a little bit closer. Well, they're they're kind of leaving with that in a bit of a tight spot here. He's alone on the bomb train. He will still get a kill, though. Kevs gets caught off guard. And now, well, now Reason, no, there, there's a man who's close to the bomb at this point. Michael Lele seems to know that there's somebody waiting under Crows to the right, but that's not going to help him. Exer with the headshot on him. And now we're into a two-on-one. It's all down to Delpan. One-on-one -on -one now, Exer and Delpan dancing as best they can, but this is all Exer's round right here. He's guessing the wrong ankle. Oh, no. The Ninja Diffuse comes out from Delpan right in that smoke. Very nicely done. And a little bit unfortunate for Exer, of course. That's a painful way to lose a game. But, as we said, Reason Gaming is still a pretty new lineup, so we're going to wait a while, I think, before we start passing out too much judgment. And considering how well ESG played against Virtus Pro, they won that game. Not too surprised it turned out like this. But, yeah. Yeah. What else? Do we need to say anything else about that game? I think it's just uh, we met. I, we uh, we uh, kind of talked about it previous to the game started. It's more or less a team, a well-practiced team versus a not that practiced team. And yeah. that's all it comes down to. And especially on a map like Train, Train is so, uh, I guess, non-lenient towards team who haven't practiced as much. Yeah. So it, it really punishes you if you aren't on point with your rotations and your executions and all that good stuff. So, yeah, just, just a rough matchup for uh, for reason to take, especially with ESG probably feeling pretty confident having beaten Virtus Pro on the same map just a couple yeah. of minutes prior. You gotta expect that. So, listen once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's been fantastic finally being able to cast, and hopefully in the future we'll be able to do a lot more here on the channel. And there is a lot of big news coming up as well. So, if you want.